inside the template file, I'll select the template, and I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste it into my design. It's okay to copy and paste the template because it will not print on the final piece, so it doesn't have to be high resolution. We're just using it to verify our work. Ensuring that the template layer is selected, I go to Edit and then Paste. I've now pasted the template into my design on the template layer. Now with my template in place, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my color guides just so that we can see the template a little bit more clearly. As a side note, we talked about the purple line being the margin line earlier and it not being important to the document. When I set this design up, I created the margins to be zero, so that's why the purple line goes to the document's trim line. To turn the color coding off, again, go to View, Grids and Guides, and then Hide Guides. You can now clearly see the template on top of my design. You can see that my document's background and images which go to the edge of the document when it trims extend past the document's edge by an eighth of an inch to the edge of the bleed line. Also, my safe area should be fine. I'll zoom in just to double check because it's a little hard to tell from here. Again, the safe area is represented by the small dotted line. Looking at my text, it falls well within the safe area so it doesn't run the risk of trimming off. All the elements of my design appear to line up properly with the template. So let's move on and save this using Copycraft's PDF presets. I'll go ahead and zoom back out so that we can see the whole document inside the window and turn the templates layer off. I could also delete this layer since it's not important and doesn't need to print on the final piece. To delete a layer, all you have to do is click on the layer and then the trash can or you can simply drag the layer to the trash can. It'll give you a warning that the template contains objects, but that's fine. Again, we don't need the template to print on the final piece, so we can go ahead and get rid of it. Now that we've deleted the template layer and verified everything in our design is correctly set up for print production, we're ready to save. Saving a PDF out of InDesign is a little bit different than saving one out of Photoshop or Illustrator. To save a PDF out of InDesign using Copycraft's PDF presets, we'll go to File and then Export. Once our Export dialog box is opened, let's go ahead and name the file. I'll name this one RM Spa Flyer Final. You can save it to your desktop as I'm going to do, or if you have a folder you prefer to save things to, Simply navigate and find that folder. Once you've found the place to save it, let's click on the Format drop-down box. We want to ensure that we select the Adobe PDF option. Once you've selected the Adobe PDF option, click on Save. After you click Save, an Export Adobe PDF Options box will open up. If you've installed Copycraft's PDF Presets, under the Adobe PDF Presets drop-down box, you can select the CCP option. Once you've selected the CCP option from the drop-down box, you can take a look at the different settings in Copycraft's PDF presets. However, there's no need to change any of these settings as they're set up to produce an optimal PDF for Copycraft's print standards. Once you're done, click on Export to begin saving this document. Once the PDF is finished exporting, you can find the saved PDF in whatever folder you told it to save to, or in my case on the desktop. I'll go ahead and open up the PDF we just exported in Adobe Acrobat to ensure everything looks correct and that it is ready to send to Copycraft for print production. If you don't have Adobe Acrobat, you could open the PDF in Adobe Reader. Once it's opened, we're going to look for three things to ensure this exported with Copycraft's PDF presets and that it's ready to send for print production. I'll go ahead and zoom out just a little bit so we can see the whole design in the window. The first thing I'm looking for in this document is to ensure that it has crop marks. 
As you can see, crop marks appear on all four edges. The next thing I'm looking for is does this document have bleed? As you can see, the background image extends past the crop marks, and the image on the left side extends past the crop marks, so this does have bleed. The final thing I'm going to look for is to ensure that the document is centered within the artboard. Looking at this document, it appears that it's centered. This file is ready to send to Copycraft for print production. To better understand the difference between a press-ready file and a file that is not press-ready, I'll open up a PDF I created earlier of the same design, but using a different set of PDF presets. I'll go ahead and zoom out so we can see the entire design in the window, and then I'll move them side by side so we can compare the two. The file on the left is our press-ready file, and the file on the right is the file which is not press-ready. The two pieces look very similar, except for the piece which isn't press-ready doesn't contain any crop marks, and the file size is exactly 8.5 by 11 and doesn't have any bleed. While the quality of this would print just fine, we would run the risk of printing this piece with a white border since it doesn't contain any bleed. Now that we've compared the difference between a press-ready file and a file that's not press-ready, you should have enough information to verify your files are correct before sending them to Copycraft. This concludes the video tutorial on how to set up a file in Adobe InDesign and save that file using Copycraft's PDF presets. For a comprehensive list of file setup guidelines, please visit our support center and under the File Setup Guidelines section, click the Read More link. Inside the Support Center, you can also learn how to send files and place an order online, as well as watch video tutorials for other products like Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop.